So shout out to the brothers and sisters online. Uh, I saw a commercial for a movie coming out. It might be out already. I'm behind the times called uh, Rise of an Empire. Y'all saw that? Well, I said to hell with that. This is the rise of the Most High's empire. Because the only empire that's going to be established in these last days is the Most High's empire. And we're going to touch on that. Give me that real quick in Isaiah 2. I just want to show y'all that in case you think any other empire is going to rise after this place called America, Babylon the Great. Give me Isaiah 2. Hope everybody got their books, notebooks, Bibles. Take notes. Isaac, you read me? Yes. You reading for me? You got it? Isaiah chapter 2, verse, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. That's what all of us need to keep our sights upon. In these last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted. Read that again. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. When it says in the top of the mountains, it means it's going to be the top government on the planet Earth. That's what you all have to understand. It's not going to be America. It's not going to be China or Russia or Afghanistan. It's going to be the mountain of the Lord's house, Israel, the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills. Come on. And all nations shall flow unto it. And when it says, and all nations shall flow unto it, that's the Israelites coming out of it. Get me that in Acts 2 and 5, because somebody gets simple. Oh, the Chinese are going to be there, and the Africans are going to be there. They ain't ruling nothing ever again. Acts 2 and 5. Give me that, Isaac. Acts 2 and verse 5. Let's see who, who's the all nations. Go ahead. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Do y'all see that? Now get the prophecy in Deuteronomy 4, verse 27, in case the gainsayer out there. <laughs> I thought my Afghanistani friend was going to be there. Oh, he's going to be there, all right. Not the way he want to be. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. This is why it says all nations shall flow unto it, because the prophecy is that the Israelites were scattered where, Isaac? Among the nations. Among the nations. That's why. So we're going to be coming out of these nations. And that's like the nation of what? We got nations called what? Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Brazil, okay, Trinidad. We're coming out of all these places. That's what it's talking about. We're being called by these strange labels the white man gave us. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. Do y'all see that? The Holy Spirit of what? Of discipline. That's what blacks and Hispanics lack. We lack discipline. That's, and because we lack that discipline, we fill the prison houses. We fill the hospitals. We fill the shelters even. Because we do not live disciplined lives. Isaac, one more again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. That's those of us who come in truth, in his truth, and we give the speeches, but we're really not disciplined in our lives, meaning we're not keeping the commandments. When it says discipline, it's referring to the law, God's laws. We're filled of, with deceit. We may look the part. We might say the right things in the, at the right time, but secretly back at the ranch. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. You're not doing what the Most High commanded you to do. Let me ask a question concerning discipline. How does, explain the action of what discipline does in reference to the commandments against uh, your uh, impulses, I should say. I want to make sure you all understand what I'm, what I'm looking for. I'm, a, I'm asking the, what is it about discipline how does, the, how does discipline work on your impulses? Because this is, this is something that people tend to flee from. We read the scripture about uh, that the law is being grievous, and it's grievous because discipline would have you to endure. I'm almost giving it away. Come on. Discipline is the defense that, that comes up when the sinful impulses um, come about. Defense right. is the one that... The, the, um, 
Discipline suppresses that. Right. That's the, he answered it perfectly. Discipline is what puts brakes on the impulse. And whenever your impulses are getting the best of you, you will, you will run away from discipline. You will make an excuse to get around the discipline. The discipline comes in when you, when you have to check your impulses. The discipline comes in when you say, my impulses are to go after 12-year-old girls. And for those that have that sick spirit. You understand? Your, the, the discipline will say, that is against the laws. And you would remove yourself from, all, from anything that suggests that you should do that kind of foolishness. You follow me? But if you don't, but if you don't, indulge, if you don't relish the discipline, you will succumb to those evil thoughts and you will look for others that will encourage you to do the same. Y'all understand? Amen. Go ahead. That discipline is the reason why Christ instituted one wife under the new covenant. Because men, that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks, I would say, out of most of Israelite camps. Right. Because most of them do not apply the papers. Most of them, a lot of them don't have a job or have their wife in their place. They're all living, wives are living in their own place, certain things in the wife's name. That's one of the biggest hang-ups, I would say, out of all the camps. We, the, I think we're one of the very few camps that push to have one wife. That's the biggest issue of all. And most, that's what the most I established. That's discipline right there. They have one in this time. Because the most side knows how we are. We ain't going to act right with, just, with multiple wives. It's not going to happen. Too much work to be done. Get Ecclesiastes 32.17. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 and verse 17. Uh -huh. A sinful man. A what man? A sinful man. Come on. Will not be reproved. You can't correct him according to the laws of God. Go ahead. But findeth an excuse. He finds what? An excuse. An excuse. Go ahead. According to his will. Right. So in the New Testament, when you read one wife, one wife, one wife, the sinful man goes, but Moses says... Right, they'll say Christ gave suggestions in the New Testament. Let's go with Moses. Read it again, Isaac. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So, in this great house of Israel, there are vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood and earth. Now, get me Proverbs 6 and 6. This truth of Israel we're trying to, we are going to raise the nation of Israel to a level that has never been seen before. We are going to do it in the name of the Lord. We will do it and succeed with or without you. I want everybody to understand that. Um, there was a scripture in Matthew you wanted before you never got to. Matthew 5.15, you said to hold? Yes, hold that still. Okay. Hold that still. All right. Wait, 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 wait. You know what? Just get it, 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 get it. Get it. Yeah. Matthew 5 and verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are, are in the house. I don't want you to meditate on that. Read it again, Isaac. Neither do men light a candle. Neither do men light a candle. And put it under a bushel. Put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick. You put light on a candlestick. Read. And it giveth light. Unto all that are in the house. So what is that house talking about? What is that house talking about? It's talking about the nation of Israel. Right. It's talking about the entire nation of Israel. Remember, in this great house is vessels of what? Gold, silver, wood, and earth. So the light has to be shown to all Israel. Read. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. So your good works must be seen by all Israel. Go ahead. And it's going to explain why. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that they could glorify your Father which is in heaven. Why? Because you're going to show them the right way. The wood and the earth are going to see the good works the gold and the silver are doing. And say, you know what? We need to be there. We need to be there. They're going to follow what? Your lead. Okay? They're going to follow your lead. Now watch this. Here's the problem, Proverbs 6 and 6. This is the problem of blacks and Latinos in Israel. This is the problem of Israelites when we come into this truth. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, 
thou sluggard. Now this is King Solomon. The spirit of the Lord is upon King Solomon. He says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. So Solomon's telling us, okay, in your life, I want you to do this one thing. Check out an ant. Just look at it. Just watch an ant. Now you might say to yourself, well, I got to look at an ant. There's a divine reason why you need to examine and check out an ant. Believe me, the white man, in his diabolical schemes, he has examined an ant. Put a camera in him. He put a camera all around him, even up his behind. That's how much he examined the ant. Look at them little movies, Wild Kingdom and all that. You know the ant saying, why don't you just leave me alone? Leave me alone! The white man check out everything. So here's Solomon saying to us, check out an ant, examine an ant. <laughs> Read on. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider her ways and be wise. Go ahead. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, gathereth her food in the harvest, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. Now, let's examine those two verses together, those verses. It says, the ant which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, it says it provides her meat in the summer, gathereth her food in the harvest, like we see here. These working ants, they prepare for the winter to come. They build. They build. Nobody has to say to them, hey, get off your lazy behind and go do something. But with black people and Latinos, you got, Tyrone, Tyrone, wake up. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. He's going to be looking for a job. You got to show him the end. Ah, oh, ma. You hear it all the time. I heard it growing up. Ah, oh, man. That's how I, we're raised like that, to be lazy. TV fills our brains. Video games fills our brains. Right. Now, I want you to check that out. That's what I want you to see. Dumb ants built a bridge to get up to that leaf. One on top of the other's back. They, are work, they work well together. With a, and they ain't arguing. Why is he in the front? I should be in the front. You shouldn't have that one right there. Ants don't roll like that. So Solomon is giving us a divine message. He said, I want you to operate like the ant. Check out the ant. They know how to work well together. And so when you examine that and you look at blacks and Latinos, and you, now you know why we ain't got nothing. We don't play well in the sandbox. We don't work well together. Why? Because we've not learned. We have not considered the ant at well, all. Look at the one, look at the two ants with that red, what is that? What is that? The apple, apple or something? The, top. the two of, because one of them can't carry it by himself. So he called his friend to help him. And they instinctively know how to do that thing. Look at the big And when they get the apple to where they need to get, then everybody in the whole house can eat. Look how they put that twig just to get across to the other yep. side. They work well together. They understood it was too heavy for one to carry. Exactly. So call your boys up and let them help. Can you read it again now, Proverbs 6 and 6, one more time, please? Proverbs chapter <laughs> 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. We didn't ask them, what is a sluggard? Right. You're what right. is a sluggard? Because we got a lot of them amongst Israel. No hands went up. Only a few hands went up. What is a sluggard? Can we look it up? Because I, you know that, that voice, Elder, the one that be like, I wonder who he's talking about. Yeah. He ain't talking about me. <laughs> I ain't no sluggard. Let's see if the word fits some of the men in Israel. There it goes. A lazy, sluggish person. Sluggish. Uh, Root word sluggish. Loafer. Men, men who drag their feet. It says, wait, wait, let me read it. At the bottom, it says, bum. Lazy bones, <laughs> bum, slacker, <laughs> slacker, a couch bum. potato. Okay, that's funny. You you can't get nothing done with that type of spirit. Okay, and as we yeah. start to grow, we start to see that there are sluggards amongst us, men who drag their feet. Read on, read it again, Isaac. Proverbs six and verse six. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. You sluggard, you bum. You, you, you slacker, you feet dragger, read on. Consider her ways. When it says to consider her ways, it says you don't know nothing, so study the ant and learn something. Because the ants make things happen. That's what the Most High is telling us. Study an ant if you want to know how progress gets done. And when you watch the ants, there's different offers. One is carrying the food. One is taking care of the kids. One is defending against the enemy. If you look at them, they got different ants doing different things to make sure that they run as a community. 
And what the Most High is saying that us as Negroes is so backwards, we got to watch insects to learn. Right. That's a damn shame. Right. That's an insult. That's what the Most High says. He's letting you know that your intelligence is below the ground. He have to bring you, he have to bring you to the ground for you to see something. He have to bring you up from the grave so that you can look at the ants on top of the ground to get your yeah, brain yeah. in mortar. Hey, Elder. Elder yes. Let me just add on. Um, the slugger, that's also known as a snail, too. Yeah, mm. They call a snail a slugger. Right, right. So, you know, we can't be moving slow like that, you know. Right, that slow mover. Drags their feet. Uh, throw some salt on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, what verse you left off at? Um, that was verse 6. Go ahead. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Wouldn't it be beautiful? We can work so well together. You don't need somebody to say, do this, do that. You already know what your job is. Do it. Wait a minute. It says, and the ant doesn't have a guide or a ruler or an overseer or anyone telling them what to do. Right. But the Most High gave us instructions on how to get down. And we're still being sluggard. That's why I say below the ground. Right. We don't? How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Right. We love to sleep. We sleep in spiritually and physically. Go ahead. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Right, meaning your poverty will come quickly and surely. Your low state, because that's why, you can examine it. That's why we ain't got nothing. Of all communities, we have nothing because as a whole, we don't apply this. And this is not talking about that one individual, because you always got that one black that go, well, I'm not like that, I'm special, I'm better than everybody. Shut up, you are not. You do not rise above your race. I don't care. You can be a millionaire. You will all, you'll still be you that rich nigga. That's how you consider. Bill Cosby, rich nigga. Oprah, Winfrey. Oprah rich nigga. That's, they still, you are still, in, uh, give me the word, give me the word, you know I mess up. You're still absolved in your race. You do not rise above them. You're still considered a part of them. No matter how clever you think you are, how much money's in your pocket, you're still what you are. My elder. And that, and that picture that we saw with the ants, which one of those ants represent Bill Cosby or, or uh, Oprah or some of these other leaders? Which one of those ants represented that? None of them, because they all, like the elders, making the point, you cannot rise above the status of your people. And they are all in the same status, working together to, to a collective common goal. Exactly. What verse you read, Isaac? That was verse 11. That was verse 11. Go to... Proverbs 26 and 13. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. The slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. Meaning he makes excuses. He makes excuses. Where do we read about the excuse maker? Nobody remembers? Sirach 32, 17. And, and it didn't call him a slothful man. What was the word Sirach used? The sinful man. It's the same thing. The sinful man is the slothful man that makes excuses. Why isn't this done? Oh, well, because um, I was doing this and doing that. My mama called. My baby needed burping. It's always an excuse of why we cannot move. Always. So what? We, we end up having nothing as a whole. Nothing. Okay? Give me Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the... see that word comfort? See that word comfort? That's what we said. The Bible is the comforter. Read it again, Isaac. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, the things written aforetime. This is what I wanted to get to. We, need, we must take examples from our forefathers on how to operate as a body. But before we do that, Abby, I want to show that video. Somehow we've been talking about affirmative action uh, this morning because of Donald Trump and because of his insinuations about the president. Affirmative action has come to the fore as well in Oklahoma. Uh, and this comes from the Tulsa world. The Oklahoma House of Representatives has proposed a constitutional amendment that would eliminate affirmative action in state government. I quote now. Wait, um, pause that. Shannon Do y'all know what Rep affirmative Rep action is? 
Can we look it up, Abigail? I'm going to read it. It says, affirmative action or positive discrimination, known as employment equity in Canada, reservations in India, and positive action in the UK, is the policy of providing special opportunities for and favoring members of a disadvantaged group who suffer discrimination, meaning black folks. So you could have a white guy going for a job and a black guy. Affirmative action dictates that if the black guy, give him the job. Even, he's quite given the job. That's affirmative action. Um, does everybody understand that? All right, go back. So I guess Obama's an affirmative action president. Uh, come on. Representative Shannon, uh, uh, T.W. Shannon from Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, he says, I believe discrimination exists. I don't think affirmative action has been as successful as we like to believe. Uh, to which one of his colleagues, Representative Sally Kern from Oklahoma City, uh, said something really prize-worthy. Now, listen, Shannon can believe that affirmative action doesn't work. There are reasons that people don't want affirmative action. I don't think they're necessarily all based in race, uh, but I think most of them are, and I think that the ones that aren't are, uh, you know, for financial reasons that should be overlooked uh, because, because race and leveling the playing field and uh, affording incentives is more about the American way than saving a few dollars. But let's, let's listen to Sally Kern. This is a representative from from Oklahoma, this is clip number three, JR. Let's talk, let's listen to her talk about affirmative action. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, God gave us two ears so we could hear both sides of the argument. We have heard tonight already that well, in prison there's more black people. Yes, there are, and that's, that's tragic. It's tragic that our prisons here in Oklahoma, what are they, 99% occupancy? But the other side of the story perhaps we need to consider. Is this just because they're black that they're in prison? Or could it be because they didn't want to work hard in school? And white people oftentimes don't want to work hard in school, or Asians oftentimes. But a lot of times, that's what happens. I taught school for 20 years, and I saw a lot of, a lot of uh, people of color who didn't want to work as hard. They wanted, wanted it given to them. Matter of fact, I had one student that said, I don't need to study. You know why? The government's going to take care of me. That's kind of revealing there. This video, y'all can look at the rest at home if you want, but it's funny because the guy, he uh, points out the argument. Now, that's what society sees of us as a whole. When we come into this truth, can we get John 3 and 3, please? Many of us might have been like that. Hell, I was lazy. Part of me maybe still is. But guess what? There comes a time now when we have to do what? What do we have to do now? Change. Mm -hmm. Change. John 3 and 3. John 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we must be born again in our thoughts and our actions. We read Proverbs 6, where Solomon reveals to us, consider the ant thou sluggard. That's to us as a whole. Why? Because many of us, you see on, on um. TV, many, you have black groups that rise up and say, oh, we don't have nothing, we don't have nothing. We don't work well together. That's why it always falls apart. Because you always got that um, one in the group that wants to destroy stuff. Watch this. Get me Genesis 41. Genesis 41. I'm going to show you something about our forefathers. Okay? We're going to start at verse 15. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 15. All right. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. I want y'all to listen to this history real good. Paul said to us, the things written aforetime was written for what? All right, let's see if that's true with us today. Read. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat fleshed. The word, the word kind means cattle or cows. Go ahead. Fat fleshed and well favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill favored and lean fleshed. So first he saw seven fat cows. 
Now he saw seven skinny cows. Go ahead. Such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kinds. So the seven skinny cows ate up the seven fat cows. Read. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored. So although they ate all them fat cows, they were still skinny cows. Go ahead. What at, verse you at? Verse 21. Go ahead. As at the beginning, so I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. So Pharaoh said, I, that's my dream. I went to my magicians of Egypt, the Africans I got around me. Not one of these dusty Africans can explain it to me. Can you help me, Joseph? Go ahead. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. So Joseph says the dream with the cows and the dream with the ears of corn is one dream. It all means the same thing. Read. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one, and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. Mm. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. So he reveals, he says, this dream is about a famine coming to Egypt. You're going to have seven bad years and seven good years. Read. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. He said it's going to be so bad, everybody's going to forget about the seven good years you had in Egypt. Go ahead. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. He said because you saw it twice, it is established by God. It shall surely come to pass. Read. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore... Let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Listen good to what Joseph is saying. Remember, Joseph just got out of prison. He, they shaved him, they dressed him like an Egyptian, brought him before Pharaoh, and he's explaining the dream to him. And now he's giving him a solution. Start again, Isaac. Verse 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. So in the seven plenteous years, he says, take up five parts. Take up the fifth part of what you gather. Go ahead. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the city. He says, store up the fifth part in the city. Store them up. Store them up. Go ahead. For seven years. Go ahead. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So he said, Joseph, over all Egypt, under Pharaoh. He said, because you have this wisdom, you're the man that I'm going to use to make sure Egypt survives these seven years of famine. Read. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see. I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. 
And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. So all the Egyptians had to bow to our forefather Joseph. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Mm. And Pharaoh called to Joseph's name, Zaphnath Paneah. Zaphnath Paneah. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of An. So now he says to Joseph, you pick any woman you want, she's yours. And he picked that one. Up, and you know she was bad. Go ahead. <laughs> and Joseph went over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So he was 30 when he got out of prison and was established second over Egypt. Go ahead. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Come on. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Pataiaphorah, priest of An, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, He hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Come on. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Manasseh became the father of the Cubans of today. Ephraim became the father of the so-called Puerto Ricans of today. Read. In the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come. The famine. Read. According as Joseph has said, and the dearth was all in, the, in, in all lands. But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when this famine hit. The only place you could find food was in Egypt. Now, the famine hit Egypt, too. But because Joseph had a plan of action, a solution, there was food to feed everybody. Read. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. What he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph, but to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. Now here's my question. What have you learned from that reading? Somebody raise your hand. Let me see where your thought is. One, two, I'm seeing some of the same hands. Let me see this young man here. What's your name, brother? Mahalalil? <coughs> Mahalalil. Oh, go ahead, what'd you learn? Basically, if you have a plan and work it out in advance, none of the bad things will happen. Like, like Joseph, he thought of a plan and told Pharaoh, we need to do this, that, and the third for the plan to work out, and that's why there was no famine in Egypt. Mm, okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh -huh, Ezekiel got his hand up. Anyway, what you got, Ezekiel? He wasn't a sluggard about his business. He was not ahead. a sluggard. Okay. Now, what he said was good. It was true. And what you said is accurate also. Anybody else? Oh, Bezalel, get his hand. Let me see what he got. Oh, wait. Let me ask you this, Bezalel. How does that relate to us? What in the hell has this got to do with us? This was in Genesis. This is thousands of years ago. See, the elder stepping it up. How does it apply today? It applies today because, uh, as we see, like with the news report you showed, there's going to come a time where a lot of us are going to have hard times finding jobs, so we're going to go through things, and we have to anticipate this and have a plan of action and come together and actually do something and prepare ourselves for anything that could come like that, like mm. they did back then. I like that. That's good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, oh, Elio got his hand up. Go ahead, Elio. What you got? <laughs> Another thing I realized, too, in verse How come no off officers got a clue? Go ahead. The, the other thing I realized in, in verse 16, and Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me, meaning he didn't sit there and say, oh, yeah, I'm the one doing all of this. He said that this was a gift from the Most High. So That's what you picked up? Yeah. Oh, that, that's, okay. that's one of the things I picked up. Uh, huh. Oh, look, there's an officer. Got his hand up. Zakai, let me see what you got. All right, basically, 
we have to be able to put a plan together and stick to it, um, discipline-wise, just like these brothers did. Well, Joseph was the brother, but what he put together, they had to stick to that, and that wasn't easy. For seven years to constantly keep doing the same thing, building, keep uh, storing away food, that, that ain't easy. Even if you try right now, somebody said, well, I'm going to save $40 a week. You might get to the sixth week and see a pair of shoes and be like, you know what? Damn, let me put that away. Let me grab the shoe. I'm glad he you know said I mean? that. You know, I'm glad you said that. See, that got the spark right there. That's that impulse. Let me tell y'all something. Where's online? You online brothers and sisters. I got to get on you. But no, 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 no. Y'all here in New York, I'm going to talk about y'all. We are trying to do so much, like, one thing, get a building. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. We're trying to get a building. Uh, some of the brothers in here and online said, uh, that's too much money I can't afford. They said, A, we can't afford the, the garments, and we cannot afford to help with the building. I'm going to tell you how that's a lie. Out of state. I want, any, anybody been out of state? Anybody ever been out of New York? I, when you're out of New York, do they have a transit system like we got here? So what do they generally have to have? A car. In order to get the car, you got to do what? You got to save up money. They all got cars, the majority of them. I'll say 90% of them. And they'll be the ones, I can't afford it. Then they're on Facebook posting, I got the latest Jordans. I'm talking about Israelites with us. Right, Oklahoma? I'm talking about Israelites posting their sneakers up. Look what I just bought. You just made me sit up. Look see, what I, I done did. And then all everybody around, we can't afford it. That's a lie. That's why Solomon said, consider the ant thou sluggard. Consider the ant. And do you know, I'm going to tell you how uh, what to. Hold on, I'm sorry. That made me speechless, man. Somebody posted to put their Jordans up. <laughs> you just gave me a headache, man. I'm I ain't going to call him out, but he know who he is. Now watch this. Give me Haggai chapter one. That sounds like a sluggard. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Haggai one verse four. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? So Haggai was getting on the brothers and the sisters of the time, particularly the brothers. He was mainly getting on the brothers. The sisters following the men's lead. He said, yeah, I got it. He said, is it time for you to dwell in your sealed house? Because everybody where we live, we make sure our little place looks nice. But back then, the Most High's house, the temple, they were, it, it had to be what? Rebuilt. And they were being sluggards and slothful about rebuilding it. Read. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. The God says consider your ways. Consider your ways. Come on. You have sown much. You have sown much. And you work and work and work. And bring in little. And you can never make dime. What is it, that expression? You can't make ends meet. Thank you. Read. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Come on. Ye drink. But ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. That's why you can never make ends meet. The Most High says your priorities are not God's priorities. Your priorities is your own house. When the Most High's house needs priority. And when we say the Most High's house, we already read that in Ezekiel eleven sixteen. It said Christ said he will be a little sanctuary. Where? In the country. So every place there's going to be sanctuaries. And if you don't take care of the place or have a place for Israel to come, to learn, to eat, to be fed, to be taken care of, the most I said, he's going to curse you. That's what he's saying right here. That's what he's saying. Was that it, uh, Isaac? Yes, sir. You went down to what verse? To uh, end of verse 6. Read 7. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Micah 4 and 10. Micah 4 and 10. Consider your ways. Because some brothers and sisters have very good jobs, but they can never make ends meet and say, I wonder why things ain't working out for me. This is why. This is why. Because a year ago, we said we're trying to buy a building. Not for our own to sit around and play video games, but for Israel to come in and learn his word and we can build. Do you not realize the vision? If, you, if we can come together and buy one building, don't you realize we could do that from state to state to state? And if we're successful at that, those who that want homes and houses, we can start there too. But if you're failing this little thing, the most I say, they ain't ready yet. They ain't ready yet. That's why the white, the white woman says black people are lazy. That's why they ain't got nothing. That's why the Bible says, consider, your, consider the ant, thou sluggard. Where we at, Isaac? 
Micah 4, verse 10. Come up. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Be in pain. Why does it be, be in pain? Because when you're trying to rise an empire, it's going to hurt. It's going to take blood, uh, sweat, and tears. The liberties that we got when our, the forefathers doing the civil rights, that many liberties you got to run your mouth on the street today. Some of our, a lot of our people was put to death for that. Dogs sicked on them, beat upside the head, all that kind of stuff. Anytime you try to make a change, it's going to be pain. Read it again, Isaac. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Y'all see that word labor? It does not say sit around and scratch or wait for the next man. It says labor to bring forth. Labor means work. Come up. Oh, daughter of Zion. Meaning you Israelites, because we're the daughter of Zion. Read. Like a woman in travail. He said, be like a woman in travail who's about to give birth. It's going to be painful. Read. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Come on. And, and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. That's where we're at today. Micah 4 is a prophecy about us going into Babylon, which is where we are now. Read. There shalt thou be delivered. There. Here is where we shall be delivered. Now, look, Luke 17 oh, and 20. Could you read that again? There's a top line. Go ahead. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Oh, a, go ahead. Be, oh, oh, daughter of Zion. Oh, daughter of Zion. Be in pain. What's another word that, that can be substituted for being in pain? Be in pain. Think about it in the context of everything that we talked about. Jaquem. Discipline. That's the word. Right on the money. Be disciplined. Yep. Be disciplined. It puts the brakes on the impulse. Exactly. So that you could get the job done. Right on point. Go ahead. Everything we want to accomplish is written out for us in the Holy Bible. This is the blueprint. This is the guide map, the road map to success. Luke 17 and 20. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 20. <clears throat> and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. When is the kingdom of God coming, huh? He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. What does that mean? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Only Jaquim know? This young man right here with the pen in his hand. What's your name? Stand up, you. What's your name? Richard. You knew. You been here a while? A little while. Okay. A little while, but uh, when it says it's not going to be here with observation, uh -huh. it's going to be here with working. It's not going to come with... Right. It's like some of you brothers weren't looking for a job. What you waiting for, Tyrone? Go and look for a job. You waiting for this. Who is it? Job. That don't happen. That don't happen. You got to get out and hustle, bust your butt early in the wee hours in the morning. So likewise, and it's truth. Christ already told you. The kingdom ain't coming with observation. It comes with labor. It comes with work. Consider the ant, thou sluggard. From there, let's go to Nehemiah 6. Nehemiah going to make some of y'all nervous. Nehemiah, the sixth chapter. I'm going to try and get through it quick because there's a, there's a bunch of things I want to hit on in this. Nehemiah 6. And we don't want to hear, oh, where I live, uh, uh, everything's not the same as in New York. We don't have money. That's a lie. If you're out barbecuing and having cookouts, and I ain't talking about uh, hot dogs, you're on Facebook showing steaks. You're showing all kinds of chickens, cold turkey, whole turkeys. Variety of Varieties of, of exquisite foods. And I'll be licking my lips going, that stuff look good. But the point is, that costs money. A Negro can find money for what they want. And you broke, brothers, when you knew when you was in the world, a hole down a block say, Look, I'm in the next barrel. Come over. You're going to find the money to meet that hole. You got the money, even if you didn't have a job. Yes. Christ said in the scriptures, uh, uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's right. it, so right. that goes to show you where these brothers' minds is. Exactly. It's not on this. It's all for show. Because yeah. if it was on this, the things that need to be done would be done. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly, 100%. Nehemiah 6 and 1. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 6 and verse 1. Now it came to pass, when Sambalat, 
and Tobiah and Geshem and Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that, and that there was no breach left in. Though at the, that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. So what's happening here, Nehemiah has gotten leave from the Persian king to return to the land of Israel. He's gone to Jerusalem. He has taken up the mission because the Rubabellum had just built up the temple. He says the wall of Jerusalem needs to be built. That's what he's talking about. Come on. Verse 2. That Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages, in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Whilst I leave it and come down to you? So what was happening? These cats, Sambalat and Geshem, wanted to harm Nehemiah, to get him to stop the great work. And what I want y'all to see out of this, when you examine our forefathers during the time of Black Wall Street, the white man said, we sick of you niggas, you can't do for yourselves. Our foreparents said, all right, we're going to get our own stuff together. What did the white man do once they saw we were successful? They destroyed us. Dropped dynamite from the sky. So that's what's happening once again here. Nehemiah's rebuilding the wall. The nations are saying, listen, let's, do, let's kill Nehemiah. He's trying to build this something here with these Israelites. Like that white woman that said, there's too many of them growing. Exactly. Come on. Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall that thou mayest be their king according to these words. So now the lie comes, oh, you want to build the wall so you can be the king. Read. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, there is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. So he's saying, if you don't come and talk with me, I'm going to tell the Persian king that you're trying to start your own nation here, and he's going to destroy you. So you better come talk to me. Read. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. So the forefather Nehemiah said, Listen, please stop. You're a liar. You're a damn liar. Nobody said none of them things you're saying. Read. But they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work. You see the point? They were trying to weaken the forefathers from working, doing the work to rebuild their nation. Read. That it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came unto the... I want you to see, he didn't get afraid like that. He said, oh, God, strengthen my hands. That's the mindset we all got to be in. Don't let nobody put fear on you. You pray unto the Most High, say, Lord, strengthen my hands so that we can accomplish this great feat. Right. There's been situations where brothers that's working in the faith and you get other people that are trying to mention certain things to hope that it'll mess their spirit up so that they can stop working for the most high. We've right. heard some of these things. A lot of them is on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Started trying to put uh, rumors out about the brothers and all kinds of stuff to, to, to destroy his spirit in working in the most high's vineyard. Exactly. Come on. Verse 10. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah the son of Deliah, the son of Mahatabel, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that God had not sent him but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. So you had fake prophets running through that time saying, the Lord told me to tell you to do this or that, or else you're going to die. We see that thing on YouTube all the time. God, the Spirit of God is moving me to correct you niggas. 
don't get no school, don't do this, don't do that. It's the same thing today. And some of you are falling for it. Well, you saw that video, you saw that. We better not do nothing. We better not help them. Well, to hell with you. <clears throat> That's show I'm sorry. That's showing you how heavy the Most High is because he has it written in the scriptures for things that were written aforetime were written for our learners. Right. letting you know that them same damn wicked spirits are right back here again. Exactly. Come on. And why the Spirit of God never move him to keep the commandments? <laughs> it's only to attack Israel united in Christ. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. Verse 13. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have a matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Right. They wanted him to sin by not doing what God told him to do. Build Israel. Come on. My God. Think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalat according to these their works. So Nehemiah said, Lord, remember those two right there according to their works. Remember what they're evil against me. Read. And on the prophetess Noadiah. And remember that dirty prophetess Noadiah. Go ahead. And the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. So the whole group of prophets, quote unquote, out prop making fake prophecies. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. Don't listen to the men of these nuts on YouTube. They're idiots. They're about stopping the work the Most High wants us to perform. Do not listen to them. Do not give heed. Come on. So the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month Elul, in, in 50 and 2 days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Hey, that's a heavy verse right there. Read that verse one more again. Come on. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof. When they heard the wall was completed. Read. And all the heathen that were about us saw these things. When they saw the great works of Nehemiah and the brothers with him. Go ahead. They were much cast down in their own eyes. Yeah, yeah they sit there looking at, they're looking at the computer. They say, what they trying to get us. <laughs> Y'all, hey. I, I was looking at this verse before it came out. I said, I can't wait till we get to this here, because that's exactly what's going down. <laughs> that's exactly what all this garbage that you see on YouTube and all that, that's exactly that's what real it's talking talk. about. That's real talk. Cavs, they should be out teaching. They watching us with their eyes down. Like them niggas is trying to do this. Okay, that's real talk. Exactly. Go ahead. They were much cast down in their own eyes. Meaning they were defeated. They realized they were nothing. All those fake prophecies to stop the work, they realized they were not of the Most High, but Nehemiah and his men were. Read. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our That's God. That's why I said we can't let nobody stop us. If we can succeed in one thing, we can succeed in another, and another, and another, and another. That's why you all have to have some kind of vision in your mind. Okay? Have a vision. Have insight. Real quick. Give me Acts 5, 38 and 39. Because Gamaliel said the same thing to the uh, scribes and Pharisees about the apostles. They were trying to stop them from teaching about Christ. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Right. If this work be of, of man, you, it's going to come to naught. But if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it. Understand that. Real quick, go back to Nehemiah 6 and 17. Nehemiah 6, 17. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah. You see that? He had many in Judah sworn unto him. Because he was the son-in-law, meaning he married a heathen woman. He married a heathen, and he had many friends of, in the, of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. The son of Arah and his son, Johanan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Barakiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. So you had certain of the tribe of Judah going back and forth from Nehemiah to this clown that married the heathen woman. Okay? Chapter 7 and 1. 
Wait, Acts, give me um, Acts 14.22. This is what I want you all to see. Don't think it's going to be easy. We already learned be in pain, labor to bring forth. Watch this. Acts 14.22. Then we're going to go right back. Acts 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So any one of you men that think this is going to be easy, tiptoe through the tulips, you're in the wrong place. You have the wrong vision. The Bible says we shall through what? Much tribulation into the kingdom. That's what God prophesied about, meaning it's going to be hell. It's going to be hard. That's why I said be in pain and labor to bring forth. Okay, go back to uh, Nehemiah 7 and 1. Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 1. 1 to 4. Now it came to pass when the wall was built and I had set up the doors and the porters and the singers and the Levites were appointed that I gave my brother Han Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them. And appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one in his watch, and every one to be over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. Now you might read that and go, I don't get it. I want y'all to see the picture of what's happening. Remember, millions of us just came from Persia. We got to our homeland. There was no houses even built. We tried, we built a temple, we built a wall, we got nations against us and wicked Israelites. Now comes the time there's no homes for us to live in. That's what y'all got to see, the work they had to go through. What we're going through now is nothing compared to that. This is nothing what we're going through. Okay, everybody understand that? Jump down to verse 66. So we shouldn't hear no stupid excuses from Florida, Oklahoma, California, Atlanta, Texas, Canada, Alaska. None of, none of y'all should have no excuses. You ain't building no houses where there's flatlands. All we hear is excuses. Not all of you, but a remnant of you. Come on, where we at? Verse 66. Nehemiah 7, verse 66. The whole congregation together was 40 and 2,303 score. Okay, that's the amount. Go ahead. Beside their manservants and their maidservants, of whom there were 7,330 and seven. Do y'all see how many of us it was? Come on. And they had 240 and five singing men and singing women. Their horses, 730 and six. Their mules, 240 and 5. Their camels, 430 and 5. 6,720 asses. And some of the chief of the fathers gave unto the work. No, notice. Some of the chief of the fathers gave unto the work. Read. The Tershatha. That means governor. Gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold. Fifty basins. 530 priest garments. And some of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work 20,000. You know why I want that part right there? They gave them not just the, the it said, drums of gold, 50 basins, 500. Uh, look at this, 530 priest garments. So they wasn't going into the land, bums. So we shouldn't hear, oh, I, I don't have no money. I can't get the garment. If you knew Passover was coming up a year ago, how much was it? How much was a garment? A hundred dollars. So for a year, three hundred and sixty-five days. Divide a hundred between fifty-two weeks, please. Somebody who's a man who can do math. How much is that a week? That's less than a dollar. It's two dollars a week. None of y'all, right there. None of y'all. None of y'all should be saying, "Oh, I can't afford two dollars a week." That's a lie. But a, a Big Mac costs more than that. I'll be seeing some of y'all gobble it down. But a pair of sneakers. And a pair of sneakers costs way more than that. <laughs> a barbecue. A, a barbecue costs more than that. You can't eat a barbecue with $2. That's right. The hell is this? So there should be no... What I'm showing y'all, the excuses that many of us have is BS. It's that sluggish spirit. Now, 
That goes for the ones that even got a job. People on welfare got more than $2 a week. So, ah, we don't want to hear nothing. We don't want to hear nothing. Isaac, where you at? That goes towards faith. That's what that deals with. Right. Verse 71. Come up. And some of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work 20,000 drams of gold and 2,200 pounds of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 drams of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver and three score and seven priests' garment. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers and some of the people and the Nephilims and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. I want y'all to look at that because notice it says they dwelt in their cities. We read earlier that there was no what? So guess what they had to do? They had to build houses. They had to do so much. Now, chapter 11, we're almost done. Chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. What I'm showing, they had to build more than one. We're trying to get one great house, and we're having a problem. They had to build thousands of houses, and they worked together. You know what helped, you know what helped them get to this verse here in 73? Faith in the vision. Right. They had to see, they had to see verse 73 from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and then they worked towards it. That's what the problem is. We got to be able to see things, a lot of us, in order for our faith to be built up. We got to actually see things. Exactly. That's a doggone shame, but the scriptures tell you about where our faith should be. Exactly. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Go ahead. Nehemiah 11, 1 and 2. Watch uh, this. Ne Nehemiah chapter 11 and verse 1. And the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. Notice it. And the rulers of the people dwelt where? At Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. Go ahead. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in other cities. Who can explain what happened here in that verse? Az Azriel. What happened in that verse right there? That verse, Nehemiah 11 and 1. I need y'all to get into these scriptures when y'all reading it. Visualize what you look reading. Um, the rulers dwelt in Jerusalem, and the rest of the people, they put their money together so that they can put, uh, so they could build one of ten that dwelled in Jerusalem in the holy no. city. Uh, Captain Malachi. Because, because there wasn't enough of us. So, they, so they, now they have to divide it. Because remember, when they come back, there was a, the land was so big, there wasn't enough of them in the land. So they have to pick a couple of brothers to be in Jerusalem, because that's where the holy day temple was. But the other cities also have to be protected. That's what's going on here. Right. Read it again. And the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. So the leadership dwelt at Jerusalem. Go ahead. The rest of the people also cast lots. So they had to cast lots. That's like rolling dice, for an example. We, everybody want to go, I want to live in Jerusalem. But they say, everybody can't live in Jerusalem. Let's roll the dice. And when, if, if the lot falls on you, you live in Jerusalem. If it falls on you, you live there. If it don't fall on you, you may have to go to Beth's uh, the land of Dan or uh, Ephraim or Samaria, something of that nature. Yes, Seth. Lottery. Right, like a lottery. Very good. That's very good. Like a lottery. See, who was going to live in Jerusalem outside of the, the rulers, and the rest had to dwell in the land surrounding. Read again. To, and the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city. And nine parts to dwell in other cities. And nine parts of the people had to live in other cities outside Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. You know why? Because Jerusalem, the center, was totally destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. Remember the history of Babylon. They totally destroyed it. And when you read it, it said there was nothing but rubble and rubbish everywhere. So that's why I said the people blessed the men that willingly offered themselves, meaning... They sacrifice them, so we'll live here. We'll take care of this part here. That's the mindset we gotta, we've got to visualize and, and interpret that for us today. Jump down to chapter 13 and verse 6. We're almost finished. I know I'm keeping you up, but just bear with me. Nehemiah 13 and 6. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 6. <clears throat> but in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, 
And after certain days obtained I leave of the king. Because Nehemiah was the butler. He served the wine. He had to get leave from the king. So a lot of you got, you got these brothers that say, oh, you're Uncle Tom. Yeah, Nehemiah had that type of job. But guess what? His mindset was after the most high God. He looked out after his people. So don't ever, you got these camps that say, don't get a job or else you a sellout. You're an idiot. You listen to these fools. Yes. Elder, so is Joseph. He was second to the king. Read on. Verse 7. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. So you had one dude prepare a, a, a living quarters in the temple for a heathen. Read. And it grieved me sore, therefore... I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. So Nehemiah wasn't no punk. You might have said, well, maybe why was he scared? He, he wasn't stupid. Okay, he knew to go in there earlier, they had a plot to kill him in the temple. But now he's at the point, he said, I'm going to throw this, this dude's stuff out. Excuse my language. I'm gonna, he went in there and threw all the stuff out. Get out. Read. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers. And thither. This dude in the temple, he got his drawers over here. Dirty socks, what the hell is this? This is the temple. You don't do that. <laughs> Come on. And thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. For the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Then contended I with the rulers. Now, what was the law for us to deal with the Levites? What was the law? You, Reuben, what was the law? The other tribes were to take care of the Levites. What do you mean? Them, bring them tithing. Which like, includes what? Like food, oil. Right, exactly. We were supposed to provide for the Levites. And Nehemiah noticed that was not done. That's why it says, and the Levites fled. Go ahead. Verse 11. Then contended I with the rulers and said, why is the house of God forsaken? And that's what we're asking you. Why is the house of God forsaken? We're trying to have a location for Israel to come together and learn. Go ahead. And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. And I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shelemiah the priest. Because and you know what? You know why that's important about the treasuries? Some of you, a Negro thinks you don't need no money. Just pray about it. Yeah, you can pray all day. Money ain't falling out of heaven. I'm praying for some money. You simple as hell. Or like Creflo, just speak it into existence. Speak it. <laughs> the people had to bring money into the treasuries. Why? That would help them build the homes, the houses, and do all that they required to do. We got to get our minds right. We got to uplift the Negro and build him and her to the Israelite that they are meant to be. Come on. And I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shalemiah, the priest, and Zadok, the scribe, and of the Levites, Ped Pediah. And the next to them was Hanan, the son of Zakor, the son of Madaniah. For they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Wait, 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 wait. Did y'all see the, what is the key word there? Distribute unto their brethren. That's the same thing we read. Give me that in Acts 4.35. It's the same thing. Thing. Nothing changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The book to of today, nothing. The book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 35. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. The keys to success is written here in the Bible. The keys to our success, one more again, is written here in the Bible. If we follow the principles written, we can succeed in whatever we put our hands to. But when we're fearful, disbelieving, or a niggard, we will fail. We can never succeed in nothing. 